Hello everybody, my name is Mike Geig, and welcome to my video on debugging in my series on Windows programming with C Sharp. Now if you aren't familiar with the term, debugging basically means uh, figuring out where things went wrong in your program. Um, so assuming you either have an error, or your program crashes, or even if it's just not behaving the way you expect it to, uh, debugging is basically the steps we take to figure out where the problem is and then to correct it. Um, a couple topics I want to talk about with debugging uh, are things like breakpoints, uh, watching, and the intermediate window, and we'll talk about those here in a second. Um, now breakpoints, you've seen me use these in the previous videos. Breakpoints are incredibly powerful uh, uh, tools for debugging your code that's available inside Visual Studio. Essentially what a breakpoint is, is it allows me to, to specify a location in my code that I can say, hey, when this line of code is reached, I want you to pause the execution of this program so I can examine how things currently are. All right, and I can give you an example of how we use those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a button here to my form right there. And I'm not going to mess around with the button too much. I just basically want to get to the code behind it. So let's say I was doing some mathematical operations after this button was pressed. So I'm going to have an int uh, x, and we'll say that's going to equal 5, and an int y, and we'll set that equal to 1 currently. Okay, um, And I will do an int result. Now this is all very um, hypothetical. This isn't actually going to be very useful code. I'm just I want to demonstrate the usefulness of breakpoints here. So let's say I had three mathematical uh, calculations inside this button press. The first one was result uh, equals uh, equals x divided by y, just like this. Okay, and then let's say I then go uh, y equals zero, and again result equals x divided by y. Well, I think at this point you can see what the problem is. And I'm going to do y equals 5, and result equals x divided by y. Okay, so we're just performing three calculations here. And the assumption is this middle calculation right here is going to cause a problem, because y will be 0, and we will be dividing by 0. So I'll go ahead and run this, and I'm going to hit my button. And sure enough, my program crashes. Now luckily for us in this instance, uh, Visual Studio tells us where the error is. It tells us it's right here. All right, We're going to pretend Visual Studio didn't tell us, and we're going to try to figure it out on our own where that error could have been using breakpoints. So I'll just hit the X there, and we'll stop this. All right. So basically, I know that I had an error when I clicked that button. If I was debugging this code, and I didn't know specifically where the error was, I might use breakpoints to help me narrow down where the problem occurred. So generally what I would do is I'd put a breakpoint at the top of a function for the like, first line of code there. I'd put one about the middle, and I'd put one at the end. And what this is going to show me is it's going to show me all the parts that do work, all right, so I can figure out where they don't work. So I'll go ahead and run this program. Now the second I hit this button, we're going to hit our first breakpoint. And we can see we did that right here, where we've highlighted this line. My program hasn't crashed yet, okay? So I know we have not yet encountered our problem. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit play again. And again, we get to the next breakpoint. We know that the error is not between these two breakpoints. Fantastic. I'll hit play again, and we're going to crash. Now, we're pretending the Visual Studio isn't telling us where the error is. So we're just going to say it crashes now. Well, what I know now is that the problem is in between these two breakpoints. The problem is not this breakpoint onward, and the problem is not this breakpoint. That gives me two lines of code to diagnose. Okay, That really narrows it down for me. It's a very powerful feature. Uh, it's great for doing that. I can take it a step further, though. Let me go ahead and run this again. And I'll trip my first breakpoint. And I know the error is not there, so I'll hit play. And I trip my second breakpoint, so I know we haven't hit the break the error yet. Well, Visual Studio gives me some control in the in this this state when we're paused our programs. If you look up here, we've got three buttons. All right, the first is step into. So if something was like a, a layered command, like a function that would take you into a new level of the of of scope, right? Step into takes us into it. So it takes us into whatever function is being called. 
We're not calling functions this time, so step into just takes us one line. Step over will execute a line of code, and if it's something that has a new layer, like a function or a method of a class or something like that, we just sort of execute everything in that layer real quick and just step over it. We don't actually go into it. We don't see it. All right. And then finally, there's step out. Step out continues executing the rest of this block and then just steps us backwards a layer. All right. So in this case, step out would take us into uh, the abyss that is the code that's running our Windows form. Um, but if we were in several layers of function calls, it would just take, take us to the next layer up. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit step into, which brings me to this line. When I hit step into again, our program crashes. So now I know it is this line. All right, now Visual Studio is telling me this, but if Visual Studio hadn't been telling me this, I would be able to say for certain, this line is where my program crashed. I tried to step over that line, my program crashed, that line is it. Okay, and then I can begin fixing it, figuring it out. I can say, hey, this is a division, so obviously y might have been equal to zero at some point. Let's figure out why that happened. So breakpoints are are very powerful at this point. Uh, we can do a lot with it, and a lot of times, if I see an erratic piece of code or something just not quite working quite right, I'll throw a breakpoint in there uh, so that the the program will stop, and I can see kind of what's going on. All right, so we can look a little bit further at this. Let me go ahead and stop this. Let me get rid of this stuff here, which will get rid of my breakpoints. All right, so let's go ahead and let's let's look at a new way of, of working with these breakpoints. I'm going to create a new function, and I'm going to call it uh, private int add one uh, int num. This is real simple. It's just going to return. Oops. It's going to return num plus one. Okay. That's all this method's going to do. And then in my button click, I'm going to do int, um, we'll say index, all right? Uh, and we will say, no, let's go ahead and, um, yeah, let's do it, index. Int index equals zero, okay. And we'll say while index is less than 10, and we will say um, index equals add one index. So we're using add one as a method that will increment index for us. All right, fantastic. So what we can do is we can actually watch this loop run. Now normally, if I were to hit play and then click that button, this loop, it only loops 10 times, will execute way too fast for me to observe anything. All right, but by using breakpoints and something we call watching variables, we're able to slow this down and actually watch the code unfold. Okay, which gives us a lot of power in seeing exactly how things function the way they do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a breakpoint on this line right here. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and run this. Okay, and so there's a few windows at the bottom here that I want to pay special attention to. Okay, let me go ahead and click this button, hit our breakpoint. And here we are, right at our breakpoint. Now, a couple of things, a couple of windows, and if you don't have these, uh, you can come up to view here and enable them. Uh, but specifically what I want to look for are things called autos, locals, and watch. All right. So these three windows down here, autos, locals, and watch. All right. Now, autos. Autos are going to show me the things that it thinks are important at this time. Okay. So we can see a few things. First off, we can see E is down here. It's a variable. And I can actually explore E and see what's inside of it. So E is telling me where the mouse was when it clicked the button. Um, e is telling me, uh, let's see here. Uh, it just basically has, it tells me there was one click. It was a left mouse click. Um, you know, so you can see all sorts of stuff there. So E is telling me some stuff here. Um, it's got some different event arguments that are empty. So that's our, our event arc E. I can also look at sender and see that sender is button one. All right, um, it's only allowed to grow and, and other things here that we can look at, non-public members and things like that. Um, so those we don't really care about right now, um, but autos just allows us to see those. We also have this. This is our form. All right, see, form one. Um, and we're seeing all the parts of form, like the button and things like that. What I'm interested in, though, is index. Index is the variable I'm actually interested in. All right, we can see that equals zero right here. All right, locals 
shows me just the things that are local to this scope. All right. So the things that are local in this scope is this sender in index. So you can see this list doesn't really change in this instance. All right. But if we had a whole bunch of other variables, even if they were changing, locals only shows us things that are local in this scope All right, or accessible in this scope. And finally, we have this tab called watch. And you can see the watch is empty. The reason watch is useful is let's say let's say there was a whole bunch of stuff in here. And I didn't want to be cluttered up with all these different things. I can come to watch. I can right click index and I could say add watch. And now index is the only thing in here. I specifically said, hey, I just want to watch index. All right. So there's only a few variables I was concerned with. I would just watch those few variables. I can also mouse over index as you've seen here and it tells me the value of index. Okay, and I can pin it if I wanted to. Um, okay, so now that we have our watch set up with our index, we can actually watch it improve. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, well, first I want to show you step out. Step out is going to take me right out of this block of code. See, step out. I came up one level, one level was out of this block of code, and it's done executing. And we're back to our form. Okay, uh, so I'll hit the button again. And this time, I wanted to show you step into. Okay, so I'll hit this, and it'll, look, it'll move me one. All right, index is still zero. And now we can watch this. We are in the first iteration of this loop. Index is zero. Now by stepping into, and since add one has a new scope, we are going to step into the add one method, and we'll come here. All right, and you see, and here I am. I'm in add one now. And I back up. I'm back on this line now. This part of add one has run. And now we're waiting for this part of this line to run. And there we go. Index has now become one. And is red, letting us know that it just changed. All right. Anytime a variable just changes in the previous line of code, it's red. Otherwise, it's going to be black. All right. And you can see here, now it's black again. Now we're in our second iteration of this loop. Again, this statement is broken down into two statements. This is the first part of this statement, where we go into this method and evaluate it. And this is the second, where we take whatever comes back from add one and put it in the index. So we'll step into, and we'll come back, and now index is two. So that's our stepping into. Now, I'm at this line of code again, but I don't care about watching myself go in here. So I'm going to click step over. And step over still run, I mean, add one still runs. You can see it's still turned to three. But I didn't have to watch it. I didn't have to go step by step. Okay? And we'll step into. Now I'm going to step into this method. And I'm going to then step out of it. So watch. Even though these lines here, this line here, and this line here will run, we're not going to see it. We're going to come right back here. All right? We stepped up a scope. All right? And then I'm just going to. And you can see we can just keep doing this, watching our loop go. Or I can hit this one, it'll go faster. And 10. We skip it because we, we're out of there. And we're out of the function. Okay? So watch and breakpoints has allowed me to actually watch this program unfold and see what happens with it. And that's very, very cool. It's very important, uh, especially when we have very complex code. And we're like, man, there's like 50 things going on at once. Let's slow it down and watch the code actually run. All right. And find out exactly where a problem occurs. And that's very, that's a very powerful capability. Mastering debugging uh, in your choice of IDEs is, you know, is, is, is paramount to, to making very complex programs. Um, so that's very neat there. Okay. One more thing I want to show you is called the intermediate window. And the intermediate window lets us test uh, variables and allows us to change variables while the program is running. All right, so that's very cool. So I'm going to click this button again, and that's going to bring us to our breakpoint. All right, and so we see here uh, that index equals zero currently. Now, uh, well, let's go let this run one iteration. So now index is one. Okay. So let's say, uh, well, let me come here to my intermediate window. Uh, intermediate window is another tab down here at the bottom. In the intermediate window, we can actually type commands in and see different things. Now, if you want to output something um, or echo it, uh, if you uh, are used to the old old command prompt, 
we can do so by typing a question mark. So question mark index will tell me the current value of index, and I see 1. Index currently equals 1. Now, I can say, just for the sake of it, I can say, what if uh, index were to be plus 100? I can see 101, so I can actually, you know, uh, evaluate mathematically some stuff on there if I wanted to. I can also change index. So I can say um, uh, index equals 10. And now you can see that index is 10. All right. And if I mouse over it, index is 10. I've actually changed the value of the variable with this intermediate window, uh, which allows me to, to test whatever. It just depends on your code, what you're actually trying to achieve. If I come back here to my watch, I can actually see index is 10. This is only iterated once, but if I come back around, we're immediately exiting our loop. Okay? So, you know, if for some reason you're running a loop 99 times and you want to say, hey, what happens if I run it 98? Okay, so you can just change some value, some size restriction or whatever to see the result uh, of that in real time without having to modify your code. Okay, so that's very powerful too. And there's a, there's a whole lot of commands you can type in an intermediate window. Uh, if you're interested, I, I challenge you to go onto the internet. Uh, MSDN is a great source for finding those. Um, inter intermediate window is a very powerful tool. Uh, but I'm not going to cover it a ton here. Uh, it's useful, but it's not necessarily useful for what we're covering in this specific course. So, you know, definitely do yourself a favor and check that out though. Okay, so in this video we talked about debugging, we talked about breakpoints, watching variables, and we touched briefly on the intermediate window, uh, which is a very powerful feature. So in the next part, uh, we are going to begin looking at exceptions.